come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Take a chair or stretch out on the sofa, whatever you like. Are you old enough to remember the opening of a popular daytime soap opera? And now, When a Man Marries, the tender story of young married life dedicated to everyone who has ever been in love. Of course, we've changed the title by one word and made it When a Man Marries. But everything is changing so fast these days, that shouldn't surprise anybody. The conventional wisdom is turning to nonsense before our astonished eyes. And the day may not be far off when the man, not the girl, walks proudly down the aisle to join his eager bride at the altar. Stranger things have not only happened, they are happening right now. Our mystery drama, Mind Over Matthew, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars William Redfield. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Never heard of beer on the rocks? No? Swell. The people who brew Budweiser never have thought ice in your beer was such a cool idea anyway. If you only knew how ice cuts down the head and waters the taste... Oh, a chilling thought. A downright tragedy with Budweiser especially. Budweiser is the king of beers. The only beer in America that's beechwood aged. Naturally carbonated. Which means Bud brews its own bubbles. Tiny ones over a dense lattice of beechwood strips. The beer ages the best way. The right way. Naturally. But add an ice cube and bloop, there goes all that extra effort. So if you forget to cool enough bud, skip the cubes and put your Budweiser on ice for a while. On the coldest shelf in your refrigerator. Even if the weight does frost you a little, it'll be worth it. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis. Someone who probably knows as little about it as anyone else once told me that if a man hasn't married by the time he's 35, chances are he'll stay single all his life. Well, our hero, Matthew Parker, being 40, is about to become the exception to that rule. If it ever was a rule, which I doubt. Listen with me now to the tender human story of when a man of 40 marries. Morning, Hester. Why, Mr. Parker, good morning. Uh, how are you, Hester? Oh, I'm fine. Well, I must say you're looking very well. <laughs> very well indeed. Oh, I feel very well. well. So what brings you here? Uh, is Dr. Caparata in? You didn't have an appointment, did you? No, 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 I, I just took a chance. Oh, well, his 11 o'clock is late. <laughs> He's in his office. Oh, good, good. Okay to go right in? I think so, just not first. Sure, sure. <laughs> I must say, I've never seen you looking better. Thank you. Yes? Hello, Fred. Oh, Matthew. How are you, fella? Well, you look great. <laughs> well, that's what Hester was just saying. Well, she's right. You feel okay? Marvelous. So what do you want with the doctor? Not that I'm not always glad to see you. Well, it's, uh, it's about my warts. Oh, Matthew. On my left hand, you know. <laughs> I thought we'd about given up on those. Warts are pesky things. Oh, Fred, I can't give up, No. Well, I've tried everything, Matthew. Why don't you just resign yourself? I can't. I'm getting married. You what? I know, I know. I'm 40 years old, never been married, but, well, I, <laughs> I'm i in love. <laughs> Do I know her? Uh, Mildred Cavanaugh? Well, she, she's only 20, Fred, but very mature. Mildred, well, her father's a patient of mine. Yeah, but you don't know Mildred. Well, she's never been to see me, no. Oh, but... uh, Mildred doesn't have much use for doctors. no. Well, say, <laughs> I feel that way myself sometimes. Yeah, Mildred says whatever's wrong with her, she can cure herself. Uh-huh. How does she manage that? By the force of her unconscious will. That's what she says, Fred. I don't necessarily believe it. Mind over matter, eh? Uh-huh, uh-huh, something like that. Oh, she's a very healthy girl. <laughs> Most people are at age 20. You know, she never even has the sniffles. Or if she does, she... 
dispels them. Yeah, well, all sniffles go away eventually. Yeah, but Mildred's go away in, oh, two minutes, three at the most. She changes her thinking and they go away. Fred, I'm telling you, I've seen it happen. <laughs> Matthew, any doctor is a fool who denies the power of the mind over the body, and I certainly don't. Uh, you won't tell Mr. Cavanaugh I was in to see you, will you, Fred? Well, I don't see why I should mention it. Well, he might say something to Mildred. So what if he did? She'd kill me. Surely not that. Well, she's pretty violent on the subject. She says once we're married, I won't have any pains or sicknesses of any kind. She'll see to that. What is she, some kind of a witch? Oh, she's a sweet, lovely girl. And, Fred, I do feel better. I mean, healthier and stronger since I've known her. <laughs> I think a sweet, lovely girl of 20 would make me feel better, too, Matthew. Yes. Is... Your 11 o'clock is here, Doctor. Okay, okay, I'll leave. Um... About my wards. Uh, Fred, we're getting married in a church. You know, it's very dressy and all that. Well, you'll be wearing gloves, Matt. Nice, clean, white gloves. Well, yeah. I'll... Ah, forget about the warts. That's my advice to you. Ah, uh, all right, if you say so. I say so. Look, I don't suppose I'll be seeing you from now on. Listen, we're still friends, aren't we? Of course, of course. Well, I don't want to hold you up. Uh, so long, Fred. Goodbye, Hester. Good luck, Matthew. Goodbye, Mr. Parker. Well, why won't he be seeing you from now on, Doctor? Well, he's marrying a young lady 20 years of age who doesn't believe in doctors. Oh? <laughs> what does she believe in? <laughs> mind over matter. Or I should say, mind over Matthew. <laughs> Come to bed, darling. In a minute? Now. Okay, Maddie. If you insist. Oh. Oh, Mildred. You're so lovely. Oh, wait a second. What for? Well, let me get rid of this headache. You've got a headache? You? I never said I was perfect. Well, I'll get you an aspirin. No, I... Never take pills of any kind. I've told you that. Oh, honey, everybody I takes... I don't. Them. I never have, and I never will. But just let me lie here and concentrate. Oh. What are you concentrating on? Horizons. There isn't any horizon, honey. This is our bedroom. Uh, is it okay for me to kiss your shoulder while you're concentrating? I guess. Are you hypnotizing yourself? I don't think so. Are you in a trance? Let me look. No. No, you're not in a trance. You look kind of far away, but you're not in a trance. I'm not in a trance. Well, then what are you? Is this some kind of auto-suggestion? I've heard of that. That must be it. Uh, is it? I'm extending my powers, that's all. Oh, extending your... That's all, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh. Uh, is it gone yet? The headache? It's going. Oh, good. Good. Uh, gone? Just about. Tell me when. Now. Uh, that, that, that's marvelous the way you do that. It's nothing, really. I mean, I, I, I couldn't do it to save me. Oh, yes, you could. Anybody could. Didn't you say something before about... Kissing my shoulder? Oh, you know what? I'm going to start with your fingertips. I'm going to kiss them, and then I'm going to kiss your hand and your arm and your elbow and right on up to your shoulder and then your neck. Oh, why don't you start? Start. Oh, mm-hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. oh first little finger. Mm -hmm. Second little finger. Third little finger. Mm. Fourth little finger. Mm. Oh, mm. Maddie. Don't stop, sweetheart. Oh, little wrist. Mm. Oh, don't stop. Little arm. Mm. Maddie, don't stop. Mm. Mm. I said, don't stop. Oh, never. Why did you mm. stop? Huh? I didn't. We felt so good. And then you stopped. I didn't. You did. Uh, uh, look, we'll, we'll start over, okay? Uh, one little finger. 
Mm-hmm. Two little fingers. Mm-hmm. Three little fingers. Morning, Hester. Why, Mr. Parker, hello. Ah, uh, the doctor in? Uh, yeah, well, he's on the phone, but he'll be through in a minute. Well, long time no see. Married life agreeing with you? Oh, boy. Yes, it's agreeing with me. You look awfully well. Oh, I am awfully well. I guess a wife was just what you needed. Well, this wife was. Uh, she's very young, the doctor tells me. Ah, uh, 20. Pretty? Oh, she's very pretty. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, the doctor's off the phone now. You can go right in. Thanks. Come in. Well, Matthew, good to see you, fella. Hello, Fred. <laughs> well, for Pete's sake, how are you? Wonderful, just wonderful. Ah, so this is not a professional call, man. Good. Ah, uh, in a way, Fred, it is. Oh, something wrong? No, something right, I think. Fred, I think my warts are going away after all this time. Well, let's have a look. Yeah. See? Don't they look better to you? Yeah. Yes, I do. Mildred's been working on them, Fred. Working on them? How? Oh, not medically, Fred. Spiritually. Oh? They're like you said, mind over matter. But they are better, aren't they, Fred? Yes, definitely. They've been disappearing one by one. That's what puzzles me. Huh? Why? What puzzles you? Well, warts don't disappear one by one, as a rule. Warts are small tumors on the skin formed by enlargement of the papillae. Well, why shouldn't they go away one by one? Uh, because medically, that's not the way it works. They disappear all at once, together. At least that's been our medical experience. Well, your medical experience must be wrong. Huh? Maybe it is this time. Medicine has nothing to do with it, perhaps. You, you mean it is Mildred that did it? Well, I was never able to do it, that's for sure. Mildred did it by the force of her... Unconscious will? Well, I, I wouldn't know about that. But as I've told you, every doctor makes a little bow in the direction of mind over matter. Yeah, but is it Mildred's mind or my mind? Well, who knows? Well, I wasn't ever able to do it before. Hey, Matthew, I heard of a boy once who had warts. A lot of them. And his mother was in despair over it. But you know what she did? She told him she'd give him a quarter for every wart. You know what happened? The warts fell off one by one. Cost the lady about $15. One by one, they disappeared, like mine are doing. Um, it did, did the boy's warts ever come back? Not that I know of. He and his mother left town shortly afterwards. It uh, got a little uncomfortable for them. Everybody was saying she was a witch. Is that what they called her? <laughs> Not that I think she was, necessarily. Fred, how do you tell a witch? Oh, I don't know too much about that, Matthew. Why don't you ask Esther? She knows everything there is to know about which. Well, I'd rather not talk about it to Hester, if you don't mind. Why, well, why can't you tell me? Well, all right. Um, witches are very nice people, actually. So Hester says. I mean, they're not like sorcerers. Sorcerers tend to be uh, malevolent, mean sort of people. Making blood sacrifices and all that. Oh. Weaving spells concocting potions, holding rituals, all that sort of thing. That's sorcery. But witchcraft, well, witchcraft doesn't go in for any of that, Hester says. Witchcraft is just the use of our unconscious powers. The unconscious will. Yeah, the unconscious force or urge, well, whatever. But, but Fred, how do you know who's a witch and who isn't? Well, you really should ask Hester about that. No, no, please. I, I want you to tell me. Well, for one thing, Hester says that a true witch always has one spot on her body which feels no pain at all, which is completely insensitive. Insensitive to pain. One spot. That's what she says. Uh, Fred, would it follow that this one spot on a witch's body that is insensitive to pain, Fred, would that spot be insensitive to pleasure, too? Well, I suppose it would. Why, Matthew? Oh, Fred, I think it's possible. I think it's just possible I married a witch. When a man marries, he takes a chance. That's all I can say. He can marry a woman with a better mind than he has, which is humiliating. Or he can marry a woman with a mind inferior to his, which is boring. 
But what if he marries a woman with a subconscious mind that is active and brilliant and on call at a moment's notice, while his own remains stubbornly sluggish and very, very sub? What then? Why, it could drive a man clean out of both his minds. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. There is a fresh new spirit sweeping the land. A free spirit that demands good products. Products that satisfy your sense of good taste and desire for economy. But above all, products that perform. Buick has been touched by this spirit. And this year, our crisply designed, solidly built Buicks will bring joy even to the most demanding of free spirits. The 1975 Buicks. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Now, this message from Show Corporation of America. The best value in town for the George Foreman Muhammad Ali Championship fight of your lifetime is the big screen color closed circuit showing at the Waldorf Astoria Grand Ballroom, 49th and Park, on Tuesday, October 29th at 9 p.m. You can watch it at the Waldorf with your friends in spacious comfort at reserved tables or grand tier boxes with drinks served from an open bar, all for just $45 with drinks, tax, and gratuities included. $40 per person in groups of 10 or more. Doors open at 9 p.m., and the Waldorf pre-fight program starts on the big color screen at 9.30 with a main event at 10. Get your tickets now by calling 421-9022. That's 421-9022. Or go to the Golden LeBang ticket desk in the Waldorf or other major midtown hotels. Act now. Get choice seats with drinks included for just $45. The championship fight of your lifetime. Watch it at the Waldorf. Special dinner package also available. Call 421-9022. Our 40-year-old hero, Matthew Parker, has married a 20-year-old lady with an insensitive area on her right arm just above the elbow and a powerful subconscious mind. Matthew, on the other hand, has warts on one hand and a subconscious mind which has not shown signs of life in years. Mildred's subconscious is dispelling his warts, but the numb area just above her elbow is a mystery and a torment to Matthew's very conscious mind. I haven't come clean with you before, Fred. I I was afraid to. Matthew, you can tell me anything. You know that. I'm your doctor. Well, you won't tell Mildred, will you? I don't even know your wife. Yeah, but you know her father. Don't tell him. Don't tell him what? You won't tell him. Well, I, I won't tell him. Now, now, what is it? Well, Mildred and I, we... Oh, boy, is this embarrassing. Um, you see, when Mildred and I go to bed... Oh, oh <laughs> come on, Matt. You're a grown man. Well, I know, but this is so personal. I, I wouldn't be telling you at all if it wasn't for that... Which business we were talking about? Well, you told me you thought Mildred might be a witch because of your warts disappearing. Ah, that's not the only reason. There's something else. Oh. oh. Well, why don't you tell me and stop stalling? Well, Fred, you see, when Mildred and I are in bed, we... Yeah? We, we, we start off, well, you know, with a with, with a little game, sort of. I mean, I... I, I kiss her. Um, <clears throat> well, that's a good way to start off. Yeah, I mean, I, I kiss each little finger... And then her wrist, and then her arm. Yeah, okay, I get the picture. Now, this is a right arm I'm talking about. Does it have to be? Well, it doesn't happen with her left arm. What doesn't happen? For Pete's sake, man. Well, no, her left arm is okay, but you see, there's a place, a little patch of skin on her right arm that... No, oh, when I kiss it, she... she doesn't feel it. Well, how do you know she doesn't feel it? Because while I'm kissing her, I... Oh, Fred, I feel terrible telling you these things. You have hardly told me anything. How do you know there's a place on her right arm where she doesn't feel anything? Because, because when I'm kissing her arm, she makes all these cute little noises. You know, she likes it. She, goes, she keeps yeah. saying, don't stop, Maddie. Well, go on. Well, well, well the first time I, I, I did it, you know, starting with the fingers, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I got almost to her elbow, and all of a sudden she says, why did you stop? She was very annoyed, you see. She said, why did you stop? Well, why did you? I didn't. I didn't. That's what I'm telling you. She's got this place below her elbow where she can't feel me kissing her. 
Last time I saw you, you said that witches sometimes have a place on their bodies where they don't feel pain. Now, you remember that? Yeah, I remember. And I asked you, did that mean they couldn't feel pleasure, too? And you said you suppose so? Well, I thought I'd make sure. So next time, instead of kissing her, I started giving her little bites. Bites? Well, I mean, not enough to really hurt. Uh, not much, anyway. Oh, she loved it. They were more like nibbles, really. <clears throat> <clears throat> I see. Mm-hmm. Oh, Mildred was crazy about it. She kept saying, don't stop, Maddie. Just like before. And then the same thing happened. When you got to just below her elbow. Yes, I got to the same place just below her elbow. And all of a sudden she said, why did you stop, Maddie? Fred, I couldn't believe it. I simply couldn't believe it. So I gave her an extra hard bite. Yeah. Fred, she didn't feel it. Well, I'll be... Uh... Fred, you think she's a witch? Uh, well, how... How do I know? Well, you said one spot that didn't feel pain. I don't know if that's true, Matthew. Hester told me that. Well, I... I've got to know. What do you have to know? Well, because I do. I mean, it's one thing to marry a girl 20 years younger, but then to find out she's a witch, I mean... I mean, it's spooky. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'll, I'll tell you what, Matt. Why don't you ask Hester? I can't talk to Hester about my own wife. Well, just tell her that you've gotten interested in witches. Well, won't she think that's kind of peculiar? Witches are her favorite subject. She'll, she'll love talking to you about all that stuff. Well, I hope that's all it is, stuff. Go on. Go talk to her now. Right now? Yeah, I think she's back from lunch. Yes, she is. You want me for something, Doctor? Uh, no, but Mr. Parker does. He wants to ask you a few questions. Well, fine. Go ahead, Matthew. Okay, okay. Well, what can I do for you, Mr. Parker? Well, uh, Esther, uh, uh, Fred tells me <clears throat> you're interested in, um, in witches and that sort of thing. Well, I'm interested in witchcraft, yes. It's a, it's a fascinating subject. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Have, uh, have you ever known a witch? I think I've known several. Uh, well, tell me, did they, uh, did they have places on their bodies that, uh, that felt no pain? <laughs> you know, no pain at all? I suspect they did. Unfortunately, I never got close enough to find out for sure. M- well, that's the, uh, the, that's the ultimate test, huh, of a witch, that this completely insensitive spot? <laughs> Can it be anywhere? I mean, does it have to be in any, in any particular place or on her, I mean, on the body? Oh, any place at all. Like an arm? Any place. Oh, I see. Uh, Thanks. Thanks very much. What? Is that all you wanted to know? Well, Hester, is that a sure sign that the person is a witch if if there's this one spot that doesn't feel pain? And doesn't bleed. Oh. Doesn't bleed? That's right. No. No blood? No blood whatsoever. In that one spot, of course. Oh, thank you, Hester. Thank you very much. Are you leaving? There's lots more, I can tell you. No, no, that's enough for today, Hester. Thank you very much. (laughs) Mr. Parker left? Oh, yes, he left. He, uh, find out everything he wanted to know? (laughs) Well, it wasn't much. I, I thought for a minute he was really interested in witches. There's so much I could have told him. It would have been a pleasure... But uh, all he wanted to know was about the place on a witch's body that feels no pain and and doesn't bleed. You coming to bed, Mildred? In a minute, Maddie. I've got a stomachache. Well, maybe you ought to see a doctor. Well, you know how I feel about doctors. Yes, I know, I know. Well, now, don't worry. My stomach will be all right in a minute. It's getting better all the time. Now, just let me concentrate. There. It's gone. All gone. Move over, darling. You, uh, you sure you're all right? Oh, I'm fine. What'll it be tonight? Kisses or nibbles? Oh, uh, uh, which would you rather? Nibbles. Oh, I love those little bites. <laughs> they get me all excited. Okay. Now, First the fingers. Uh, one little finger. Mm. <laughs> Two little fingers. Mm. <laughs> Three little fingers. Oh, mm. That's lovely. Don't stop. A little hand. Mm. Little wrist. Oh, mm. Little arm. Oh, yes. Don't stop. I said that. Why do you always... Oh, Mildred, stop? forgive me for what I'm about to do. Well, what are you going to do, Maddie? I already did it. Did what? 
you didn't feel it. Feel what? And you didn't bleed. Uh, is he here? Oh, Mr. Parker. Well, what's the matter? I got to talk to him. I got to talk to him. Is he here? Oh, the doctor's at the hospital. Office hours don't start till nine, Mr. Uh. Parker. What's the matter? Oh, here. Come sit down. What? Well, you look awful. I feel awful. I feel terrible. Well, you want me to get you a glass of water? No, no, Hester, don't leave me. Stay with me. Oh, Mr. Parker, what is it? Hester, can I trust you? Well, of course you can trust me, but what is it? I was going to talk to Dr. Caporato, but if he won't be here till nine, I can't wait that long. I could hardly wait till morning. I snuck out of bed at six o'clock. Oh, Hester, can I talk to you? Well, of course you can talk to me. It's about my wife. I feel so disloyal talking about her, but I've got to. You can talk to me. Believe me, you can. Hester, I think my wife is a witch. Oh? I'm practically positive. Well, what makes you think so? Now, first, it was the way she made my warts go away. You knew about that? The doctor told me. Then the way she makes all her own pains and things go away. Well, just last night she had a terrible stomachache, really awful, but she applied her subconscious will to it and it went away. Just like that. Witches can do that. That and more. Well, I wouldn't have left her to come here if it hadn't gone away. I, I mean, I wouldn't have, no matter what she said, but she said she was fine, so I came. You think she's a witch just because her stomach ache got better? Oh, no, 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 that's not all. Oh, well, what else? Well... You remember when I was here the last time? You told me that a witch's body had a place on it that felt no pain? That's true. And that... that didn't bleed? Yes. Well, Mildred has a place like that. Well, how do you know? I know. Because I bit her. You bit her? Oh, yeah. You mean just walked up to her and, and bit her? No, not exactly, but I... I bit her. I bit her. Hard. Well, how did you know where to bite? Hester, please, never mind. I can't go into all that, not with you. But I knew where to bite, and I bit, and she didn't feel it, and she didn't bleed. Not one little drop of blood. Well. I mean, it scared me so. I, I couldn't make love to her. I told her I had a headache. She wanted to concentrate on it and make it go away, but I told her no. I wanted to keep it. That made her mad. Oh, naturally. Oh, Hester. What am I going to do? Well, what do you want to do? Well, I can't stay married to a witch. Witches can be very nice, you know. Well, I'd always be looking at her and thinking, holy cow, she's a witch. Matthew, oh, may I call you Matthew? Oh, certainly. We've known each other so long. Look, Matthew, witches are people, flesh and blood people. The magical power they have only means they have a, a greater grasp on reality than, than other people. They have greater use of their extrasensory powers. Real flesh and blood? Of course. You see, witches live on the higher levels of consciousness, that's all. Well, I, I'll try to get used to the idea. Oh, once you do, you'll, you'll love it. Huh? Well, I guess I'd better go home. Oh, must you? D do you think I should tell Mildred I know she's a witch? I wouldn't. It's possible that she doesn't even know it herself. Yeah, she is very young. Maybe she hasn't found out. Yeah, I, I'd better go home. She really had a terrible stomachache last night. Oh. You know, for a witch, she certainly gets a lot of aches and pains, more than I do, really. Well, she's only human, Matthew. Well, thanks, Hester, for talking to me. It, it, it helped a lot. Oh, I'm glad. Here, let me take you to the door. Oh, I'm all right. I'm all right, really. Oh, sure you are. Uh, uh, thanks again. I, I'll be fine now. Who's that? Who? Where? Crossing the street. Boy, it's Mildred. Well, is she coming here? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. She looks like she's in a hurry. Oh, she shouldn't cross the street in the middle of the block. That's right. No, she's up. M Mildred! Mildred, look out! The truck! Look out for the truck, Mildred! Anybody want to take the witch test? I know my face bleeds because I cut it while shaving this morning. And it both hurt and bled. But there's all that other flesh that covers the rest of my poor old body. Would you have me go over it every inch with even the tiniest of pins? Thank you, but no. I have other things to do, and frankly, I'm not keen on finding out. Not unless there's a guarantee that I won't wind up under the wheels of a fast-moving truck. We'll come back shortly with Act Three. Matthew, poor 40-year-old Matthew, who married Mildred, a 20-year-old witch. 
poor Mildred, who could make warts vanish and dispel her own aches and pains by sheer force of concentration, but who died suddenly and carelessly, albeit painlessly, under the wheels of a two-ton truck. What price being a witch? What price being the widower of a witch? Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this, Fred. You know, the two of you coming over here for dinner. Oh, how, how's the steak, by the way? Oh, it's great. <laughs> Marvelous. Oh, you two are about the closest friends I've got now. You're the only ones who knew about Mildred. I mean, knew all about her. I'm, I'm really very grateful to you both. Uh, don't mention it, Matthew. We're happy to be here. Oh, you know, this is the first time I've seen anybody. Anybody at all since Mildred got run over. I... I I've been in shock. Well, who can blame you? Where was the second sight witches are supposed to have? She didn't even see the truck, and and it was a big one. Second sight doesn't mean sight with the bodily eyes, Matthew. Well, it should, I think. Well, the thing I don't understand is what she was doing on my street. Did she have any friends on my street? No, Fred, that's just it. Our friends lived over in our part of town. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, then what was she doing there? Well, it looked to me as though she was coming to see you. And she crossed the street right smack in the middle of the block. Yeah, directly opposite to your office. That's how we happened to see the whole terrible thing. She, she looked as though she was in an awful hurry. She didn't look to the right or to the left. Just put her head down and charged across the street right in front of this huge truck. <laughs> Why should she be coming to see me? You think maybe she knew you were there? She didn't know I was still seeing you. Well, then why? She she couldn't have been shopping in my neighborhood. There aren't any stores. It's got to be that she was coming to consult me professionally. It's got to be. No, Mildred wouldn't do that. Mildred took care of her own aches and pains. Well, maybe this time she couldn't. Well, she'd had a stomach ache the night before. Was it a bad stomach ache, Matthew? Oh, it was pretty bad. But she got over it. She didn't take anything for it. Mildred? Mildred would never take anything for anything. She just concentrated and the pain went away. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it didn't. Oh, yes, yes. She was fine in just a few minutes, and she was fine the next morning. Pain isn't always a curse, you know. Pain is a signal that something's wrong. If we didn't have pain, how would we know something was wrong? Well, it's our thinking that's wrong. That's what Mildred said. So when she had a pain, she she changed her thinking. <laughs> Sounds so simple. Yeah, for her it was. Nope. I'm not satisfied. Matthew, I want your permission to do an autopsy on your dead wife. An autopsy? Yeah. I want to have her body exhumed and do an autopsy. Well, will they let you do that? With your permission. I think I can get her father's. Yes, but what excuse will you give? Oh, that there's a possibility she was, well, maybe ill, maybe incapacitated before the truck hit her, something like that. Do I have your permission, Matthew? Well, I... Hester, should I say yes? Well, I think you should. But look at it this way. It'll be the first autopsy ever performed on a known witch. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Hester. And how are you? Oh, I'm not too good. I'm sorry. Is anything wrong? In particular, I mean? Oh, I miss Mildred. Well, of course you do. You know, it's a funny thing. I was a bachelor all my life. I mean, I was 40 when Mildred and I got married, and we we weren't married very long. You'd think I could just go back to being single. Well, I guess it doesn't work out that way. No, not for me. The only really good time I've had since Mildred died was the night you and Fred came to dinner. Oh, that was very nice. Did you really enjoy it? I know I'm not much of a cook. Oh, I loved it. Well, good, good. Uh, maybe we could do it again sometime. Oh, uh, look, uh, how would you like to come to my place for dinner? I'm a very good cook. Or so I'm told. Say, I'd like that. I, 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 I'd like that a lot. Oh, uh, sometime next week? Uh, or this week? Tomorrow night? Great, great. And look, we won't talk about Mildred at all, okay? (laughs) If that's the way you want it. Well, sure. I've got to forget all about her and and her being a witch and all that. You think Fred's done the autopsy yet? I'm darned if I know why he wanted to do that. Well, he was curious about 
why a witch like Mildred would be coming to see a doctor. Well, I don't know why I said, okay, go ahead, and then why her father said, okay. Matthew, Mildred's father knew. Hmm? Knew what? That Mildred was a witch. No. Well, he suspected something. He knew she had these self-healing powers ever since she was a little girl. Now, she'd fall, skin her knee, and then she'd go off somewhere by herself, and in a couple of hours, it would be all healed. Can all witches do that? Not all witches choose to do that. Some witches choose to do other things. Like what? Oh, like seeing into other people's minds. Reading their thoughts? Well, what's so bad about that? We all have the same thoughts, more or less. Well, I don't want anybody reading mine. I wouldn't care if you read mine. Oh, I... I wouldn't do that. Why not? Well, I... I just wouldn't. You could, if you tried. No, I... I, I wouldn't try. L listen, why didn't Mildred cure her father of anything? Tell me that. She cured my warts. Her father didn't choose to be cured. Not by witchcraft. <laughs> he was afraid of witchcraft. He chose to come here instead. Why wasn't I afraid? Oh, well, for one thing, you were in love. And for another... Yeah? Well, what's the other thing? I think you'd better find that out for yourself. <laughs> Coming. Oh, hello, Fred. Hello, Matthew. Come on in, come on in. Thanks. Uh, I was just going to have a drink. Would you join me? Okay. Good, good. Hey, what brings you here? Not that I'm not glad to see you. I wasn't looking forward to drinking alone. But, <laughs> you know, it took me long enough to get married, but now that I've been married, I, I don't care too much for being alone. Here you go. Here's your drink. Oh, thank you. I don't suppose you could... Stay for dinner, could you? I've got plenty. Uh, no, my my wife's expecting me. Oh, that's too bad. Well, but you're lucky you got a wife. Yeah, I know. You know something? This morning when I was having breakfast and reading the paper, I got so darn lonely, I just started to cry. I didn't even know I was crying, but all of a sudden I, I couldn't read the words, not not even the headlines. I ran out of this place so fast, I, I, I went over to see you. Yeah, Hester told me you were there. Uh, Hester and I had a nice talk. It picked me up a lot. Oh, and you know what? She's going to cook dinner for me. Well, that's nice. Tomorrow night. I'm looking forward to that. And Fred, you know what she told me? She said Mildred's father has known all along that she was a witch or that there was something, well, odd about her, you know, self-healing powers ever since she was a kid. Yeah, that's right. That's why he agreed to the autopsy. Oh, yeah, the, the autopsy. Yes, I, uh, I've got the results. Yeah. Matthew, your wife had a ruptured appendix. You mean... But, but she said it was just a stomachache. Well, she was wrong. But, Fred, she made the pain go away. She told me so. She was telling the truth. Well, it must have come back then. And this time, she couldn't make it go away. She panicked. Her witch's powers failed her. Well, let's say she just overextended them. And she was on her way to see you. Peritonitis had set in. She might easily have died, even if the truck hadn't hit her. Oh, poor Mildred. Yeah. Like I told you, Matthew, um, pain does have its uses. Or what are doctors for? Hester, I want to help. Now, there must be something I can do to help, huh? Well, now, you, um... Oh, you want to peel the potatoes? Sure. Oh, well, just sit down here. All right. Now, here's the potatoes. Mm -hmm. Oh, peel about four. Uh-huh. Here's a knife, and here's a lovely paper bag for the peelings. Okay. <laughs> hey, you know, this is great, sitting in your kitchen, peeling potatoes and everything. Uh -huh. You know something? Mm -hmm. It's good that we're sort of the same age. Don't you think so, Hester? I mean, Mildred was so darn young. Boy, was she ever young. Of course, that made her attractive in a way, but in another way, it didn't. I mean, you never heard her talk, but she had this sort of squeaky voice. I used to think it was cute, but I don't know. I mean, I think after a while it might have gotten on my nerves. Now, you, on the other hand, have a very well-modulated voice. Do I? Maybe Mildred talked that way from being a witch. Oh, I don't think so. No? Matthew, you must understand that witches are not uh, 
are not harpies or hags or conjurers or shamans. I mean, they are quite simple, ordinary people, really. Only they, well, they maintain contact with the deepest powers we possess. Other people lose that contact, but witches hold on to it. Uh, contact with what, Hester? Mm, with the unconscious mind, Matthew. With that reservoir of strength and passion and feeling. With the simple, uncomplicated drives to fight, to conquer, to possess. To love and be loved. Well, is that what it's like down there in the unconscious? Well, don't you feel it is? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. You see... Hester, I want to conquer you. I, I, I want to possess you. I want to love you, and you should love me. Oh, I do love you, Matthew. You do? I always have. Well, you never told me. I wanted you to find out for yourself. Well, say. <laughs> I, I think I better get back to peeling the potatoes. <laughs> this is all kind of, kind of overwhelming. Oh, darling, well, you'll get used to it. Matthew... Hey, look what you've done. What have I done? Well, what's this? What's what? Here on the table. Oh, I don't know. What is it? Well, I, I believe it's the tip of your thumb. Well, yeah, the, the, the tip of my thumb? Give me your hand. Your left hand. The, Here, put the potato down. What? Here, there. You see? You, you, you've you cut off the tip of your thumb. Well, how'd I do that? Well, when did I do, when did I do it? Oh, a few minutes ago. Hester, it isn't bleeding. There's no blood. Not a drop. But that's impossible. I... No. It's not impossible, is it? Not for us witches, it isn't. Us witches? Nothing is impossible for us witches. You too? <laughs> Me too. Oh, darling, don't look so unhappy. Witches are just like ordinary people. Only better. <laughs> Witches are just like ordinary people, only better. You know, that sets me to thinking. Not always, but at various times, I have felt that I was, well, uh, far from ordinary. The feeling never lasted very long, but while I had it, it was very intense. Could it be? Oh, no. And yet, and yet, Perhaps it's true. I am a witch. And you? How about you? I'll be back shortly. If you take a look at the 1975 cars, you'll notice a European influence. And there are some new American cars that rival the Europeans. One being Buick's new Skylark SR, with its touring car interior and spirited little V6 engine. But don't think of the Skylark SR as a European tourer. We're proud of the fact that it's a Buick. You will be, too. Buick. Dedicated to the free spirit in just about everyone. Dodge is right on target. With great buys. See the friendly Dodge boys. They're good guys. Surround yourself in quiet elegance for 1975 in the Dodge Royal Monaco Brougham. Never more beautiful than now. Royal Monaco Brougham. Luxury you can afford to enjoy. Dodge is right on target. With great buys. See the friendly Dodge boys. They're good guys. We've got a full line of Dodge Monacos, including wagons. So come in. Experience the comfort, convenience, and luxury of Monaco. The Dodge Boys have what you're looking for in 75. See the friendly Dodge Boys. They're good guys. Scarsdale Dodge, Scarsdale, and Ocean Spray Motor Sales, Island Park. Our cast included William Redfield, E.V. Juster, Bryna Rayburn.